All right, I'm at this spot again to see if I can catch a big flathead without it breaking my line again. Now I'm doing something a little bit different than what people normally do. I have caught some baby skipjacks, so I'm gonna to try to use them to catch a flathead with. I also have a couple of big skipjacks that I can cut up and use as cut bait. So I got a few different choices to use tonight. I know I posted on my community tab that I was out of bullheads. I took them out the other day and tried to bank fish with my last three bullheads and didn't catch anything. There was not a single bite. So hopefully tonight will be a little bit different. Baby skipjack herring. I gotta be real gentle with casting these because they are delicate. And I already cast it off. I may have to lip hook them. I am using really big hooks for these little bitty skipjacks. They die pretty easily. I have a dead one in here. There we go. I do have a couple of big ones. I might put one of these guys on. This is a recipe for disaster because these guys are big enough to pick up these four ounce weights and move them around. Why not? Big old skipjack. Definitely going to be an interesting night. When they're big like this, I like to saddle hook them. Which I actually got this from somebody else, how to hook them like this. Man, I am messing up tonight. I didn't click the bail. This is a new line, so it's bird nesting a little bit. Once it gets used a little bit, it should be better. Okay, let's turn the noise off. I'm gonna to toss this little guy out whole. Time to get my ram bait board out. This is the same one that Ty uses on his boat. I've fished with him several times in previous videos. And I think it's a good board. And here's one of the big skipjacks I caught. This is as fresh as the bait can get right here. Let's put this big head in the deeper water. Small tail piece towards my log. And I'm going to put this big old centerpiece towards the shallower water. All right, hopefully I'll be able to get something tonight. If anything grabs number four, it's going to be something enormous. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. All right. Let's see, what was this? This was a piece of skipjack, wasn't it? All right. At least I'm not skunked tonight if uh, my line doesn't break. Come on. Might be a little bit bigger than I think he is.
See if I can get them up off the bottom. He's definitely acting like a flathead. I mean, it's not deep. This water is not deep at all. <laughs> he must have swam to the boat. Now, if he just would come up off the bottom. Come on. I want to see what you are. Even though this is a new line, I don't want to give him too much pressure. Here, come up when he wants to. Whoa! Might be a big channel cat. I'll get off the map. He sure ain't wanting to give up. Come on. Oh, that's a flathead. <laughs> Lively one. You know, I think this was the baby skipjack, actually. Because that's the live baby. That's the big skipjack. And this one was that whole baby skipjack. That's kind of interesting. I didn't cut it or anything. All I did was hook it. Ow! Ow! Ooh, he's got some good teeth on him. I think he got my finger pretty good there. Ooh, yeah. Got my finger, a good one. Nice flathead. I'm not gonna weigh him, I'm just gonna go ahead and release him. This guy did not fight as hard as the one that I lost in that other video. I'll put that I card above if you haven't seen it yet. But this is what I came out here for, flatheads. And my finger is bleeding. Too bad I don't have any more baby skipjacks to throw out there. I get this piece out there and then tend to my finger. You may think flatheads don't have teeth, but that guy had a good set on him. That's the first time I've actually been cut by a flathead catfish. So hopefully I can get another one. Well, I guess I'm going to have to break out the first aid kit. I got this waterproof bag that put a bunch of first aid items in. Emergency towel, a bite and sting kit for like snake bites. Although those things sometimes don't work that great. I got a bunch of condensed towels just in case. You need them for whatever reason. A life straw, a mini first aid kit, which I know there's bandages on that. A package of stuff, matches, and other random stuff. There's a flashlight in here, a fire starter, paracord, some more stuff. I think there's hydrogen peroxide in there. Paracord and some more towels. It's not really bleeding, that's a good thing. It's actually stopped bleeding, but I'm going to put a band-aid on it anyway. You guys may notice that everything on this boat is wet. I was actually caught in a rainstorm while fishing for the skipjacks. I knew it was coming and there was no lightning or anything on the radar. So I just kept fishing through the rain. There's a towelette on there and it's stinging, stinging, stinging. A little bit of triple antibiotic ointment and a band-aid. A little bit more than what other fishermen do. A lot of times they just use super glue. But I have all this handy because you never know. 
The boat keeps hitting the sign. Makes me think there's a bite or something going on. All bandaged up. Now I gotta get all the stuff back in the bag. I had this bag on my kayak a long time ago and I transitioned it over to the boat. You gotta press to get all the air out of it and then roll it up. And it works really good. Keeps stuff good. You know you're having a good night when you have to break out the band-aids or the super glue. Now it looks like another boat is coming up on me. There's usually no boat traffic back here. But I know people like to go out and crappie fish and go in the TBA area that's in the back and hunt and do plenty of other things. My side rods out of their way. Check all the baits too. I bet this little bitty skipjack isn't alive anymore. Nope, I'm going to try hooking him differently. Hook him like I hooked the other one. Right through the belly. I'm gonna put a bigger piece on this side. Since they're not going past me, I put my lines back out. Of course, I threw it right off the hook. So no more baby skipjacks out. I thought I might have uh, crossed my line. That's why I reeled it back in. Another nice big skipjack to use. I think I'm going to cast it over here. And I've already got a head over here. So I'm going to leave the head here. And just refresh another bait with it in a little bit. Hopefully I can get more than one fish at this spot. I have never caught more than one fish here. Or at least on the log when I'm hooked up on the shore over there. Something's gotta drop by soon. Well, it's been a couple hours now and I keep getting like little dink bites on each rod. Must be a bunch of little channel catfish have come into the area, or maybe even creek chubs. Or bullheads. This is a creek, and I know there's bullheads in it. I've actually noticed a couple of changes happen in the past hour or two. The sky is starting to clear up, so there's no clouds in the sky, and water is starting to go upstream, coming back here to this backwater area. So they've either closed one dam or opened up the other, causing a backflow with the water. I really don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but with no bites happening right now, I'm gonna say it's a bad thing. Now, what do you guys think? Do any of you fish in an area that sometimes gets a backflow like this where the water is going upstream because of a dam being opened or closed? Does that turn off the fishing for you or does it make it better? But well, I'm gonna reel all these up and head back to the ramp. I definitely caught a nice fish tonight. And I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to watch my video. I really, really appreciate it. And if you do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Someday I will catch more than just one fish in this area. Thank you again for watching.